because she had to use the toilet and to eat something, because I didn't know what I could do other than to give my aunt whatever she needed, I had no choice but to bring her back upstairs with me. I sliced a piece of bread from the half a loaf that was left from dinner, buttered it, poured her a glass of milk, and after she'd gone to the bathroom and I'd pulled the kitchen shades so that nobody could see in from across the way, she came into the kitchen and feverishly gobbled everything down. Her coat and her purse were in her lap, and she was still wearing her hat, and I hoped that as soon as she'd had enough to eat, she'd get up and go home so that I could go down and get the suitcase, pack it, and run away before my mother returned from the meeting. But once she'd eaten, she began to babble, repeating again and again that she knew the truth, and because of that, they were going to kill her. They'd called out the mounted police, she informed me, to find where she was hiding. In the silence that followed that startling remark, which in those circumstances, when suddenly there, was, there were no longer any predictable happenings, I was enough of a child to almost believe. We followed the audible progress of a single horse prancing up the block toward Chancellor Avenue. They know I'm here, she said. They don't, Aunt Evelyn. But the words had no hold on me as I spoke them. I didn't know you were here. Then why did you come looking for me? I didn't. I was looking for something else. The police are outside, I told her, convinced that I was deliberately lying, even while speaking as earnestly as I could. The police are outside because of the anti-Semitism. They're patrolling the streets to protect us, she smiled, the smile reserved for trusting souls. Tell me another one, Philip. Now, see, now nothing that I knew coincided with anything either of us was saying. The shadow of her madness had crept over me without my as yet understanding that while hiding in our storage bin, or perhaps earlier than that, while watching the FBI take the rabbi away in handcuffs, she had indeed lost her mind. Unless, of course, she al she'd already begun hopelessly slipping into insanity the night at the White House when she danced with von Ribbentrop. That was to be my father's theory, that long before the rabbi's arrest, when Bengelsdorf was astonishing all of Jewish Newark with the unseemliness of how high he had climbed in the president's esteem, she'd abandoned herself to the same credulity that had transformed the entire country into a madhouse, the worship of Lindbergh and his conception of the world. Do you want to lie down? I asked, dreading that she would say yes. Do you need to rest? Do you want me to call the doctor? Here, she took my hand so firmly that her fingernails bit into my flesh. Philip, dearest, I know everything. Do you know what happened to President Lindbergh? Is that what you mean? Where is your mother? At school, at a meeting. You'll bring me food and water, darling boy. I will? Sure. Where? To the cellar. I can't drink from the laundry sink. Someone will find me. You don't want that, I said thinking immediately of Joey's grandmother and the fiery breath of madness that wafted from her. I'll bring everything. But having promised her that, I couldn't possibly run away. Would you happen to have an apple? asked Aunt Evelyn. I opened the refrigerator. No, no apple. We're out of apples. My mother hasn't been able to do much shopping. But there's a pear, Aunt Evelyn. You want that? Yes, and another piece of bread. Make another piece of bread. Her voice kept changing. Now she sounded as though we were doing nothing more than getting ready for a picnic, making the best of what we had on hand to take to, to take to Wequawkic Park, to eat by the lake under a tree, as though the event as though the events of the day were so unimportant to us, as probably they were to everybody else in America, a minor nuisance to the Christians, if that, as there were more than thirty million Christian families in America and only about a million Jewish families. Why really should it bother them? I cut a second slice from the loaf for her to take down to the cellar and smeared it extra heavily with butter. If asked later about the bread missing from the loaf, I'd say that Joey ate it. That and the pear before he ran off to see the horses. And we'll pause there. <laughs>